Hey everyone, welcome back. Jameson Repair Shop. Well, another Bronco video, and there was going to be a few of these uh, coming up. Also, uh, hope to get the Thunderbird in pretty quick here. Uh, the 65 hardtop. Weather's turned nice. 21 degrees yesterday. It looks, uh, it was really nice. Shorts weather. I'll have to get the shorts on pretty soon. I'll, I'll spare you guys of seeing that. However, uh, we'll get back to the Bronco. Um, what's going on with the Bronco? Well, the Bronco rear tailgate window won't go up and down. There's no reaction from the switch. So I have a wire diagram and uh, right here. And this wire diagram was provided from uh, Jeff Bronco Graveyard. So all right, the first step, according to the wire diagram, is to find the source of power. <laughs> well, what research I've done already, there should be a uh, 20 amp uh, auto reset breaker on the uh, uh, start relay under the hood by the battery. So let's go look, and I know already because I've gone there, so I know what's there, but I want to show you guys. All right, so first step is getting power to the system. Uh, there's not a lot to this system. I'm just gonna go and go through it here. It goes from this relay, this starter relay, through this um, auto reset breaker, 20 amp, and then it goes down into a relay, but for the dash switch, also at a splice 211, which I have no idea where that is, but there's a splice in the system, and this black and white wire goes all the way to the back tailgate, straight, direct and goes into that multi-switch for the door tumbler, for the key. So first thing is, let's get power going back there. This has uh, been off for a long time, so she's pretty rusty. So let's get her, uh, let's get it cleaned up a bit and we'll see if we can get power going back there. And I'll grab my test light. Um, I have a multimeter and test light, but I like doing the test light for quick checks and if you need to know the amount of power going back, that's where you would use your multimeter. Say you're still not getting full power. But test light usually is a pretty good indicator you're getting power. So when I get this cleaned off, I'm just going to jumper this with a, with a jumper cable. Just a little like a, this one right here. Just going to jumper it to the battery. I don't know if this is any good or not, but I know it's not going to be any good with the amount of rust that's on it there. Okay, I got my test light. I got this cleaned up a little bit. So let's just jump it over from power. From the, I got right from the main post. This actually bolts to the starter relay on the positive side, the po direct power from the battery. So this is basically the same thing, except it's bypassing the starter relay. Well, not bypassing, it's just not hooked to it. So if I have that cleaned up enough, let's see if we have power. So I'll ground this out. All right, so I've jumpered it over and taken my test light and I want you to check the opposite terminal. Nothing there because it's rusty. But when I get on the actual clear metal, I have power going through to the wire that goes to the back bumper. All right, so that's the first step, getting power on the system. So now that we have power on here, on this uh, auto reset breaker, let's take a scoot to the back and see if there's power on the uh, plug that's closest to the tailgate. So I already know where that is, so let's go do it. So here's the plug that you'll be looking for, that I'm looking for. And I just wanna mention on the wire diagram that it's a black and white wire that runs all the way to the back. Hopefully you guys can see that, yeah. And right here is where we're working in this connection. So it's connection 1907. I just want to mention also that there's two other connections ahead of this. So if we run into power issues to this connector, we have to start chasing them back. At that point, I would go all the way back to the switch in the dash and start out from connector there, see where I have power. So I'd check the switch power at the switch, make sure it's working, and then go to the next connector or I'd probably come back here and check, and then if I don't have it, I would go back and check one of these other connectors. <clears throat> these connectors, I believe this one's in the dash, and the next one would probably be under the chassis somewhere. But for now, we're dealing only with the power going to the back of the 
the Bronco to the tailgate, the connector right before the tailgate. So, <clears throat> so what we have is a black and white, like I said, and then it says it's a purple and green. Well, I think that's purple. Definitely a green stripe on it. And then it's uh, purple and black. Well, these wires are a little bit faded. This one's probably a look more of a blue, but that's not what it's showing. Anyway, um, I'm gonna work with these because I know these are the right ones. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna test to make sure the black and white wire has power. So I'll break this plug apart. <clears throat> so the black and white wire is the top one in here. So I'll ground out my, I'm gonna ground out my uh, test light here. If I can find a good ground, everything's a bit rusty. All right, that's not a good ground, maybe. Try the bumper. There, so we have power on the black and white wire to this last connection right here before the tailgate. So that means the power is coming directly from the battery straight back to this connector. All right, so we know we have power on the black and white wire going down to this connection right here. This is right at the bumper. So now we have to check uh, the switch, make sure that we have power on these two legs. So in order to get the switch to work, we have to make sure we have power coming through from the ignition and then this is the accessories and run position. Either one can be switched on or on accessories or on the run position through the fuse box. And I believe that's fuse number 10. Yeah, fuse 10, which is the third over from the left on the bottom of the fuse box. And I'll show you. And then that goes over and that's what actually activates this relay right here. And then there's another wire that goes out to the four wheel drive uh, indicator that would be on the dash. This one's missing on this vehicle. The plug underneath for the transmission is there. Uh, I haven't found the plug up here. I have, uh, that's least of my worries is the indicator for the four wheel drive. But for right now, let's go up and we'll check to make sure we have power on fuse 10. And then we'll uh, listen. We'll turn it on and off and let's listen for power on the relay. If the relay is activating, we'll go over to the switch and we'll test to see if we can get power out the switch out of the switch onto these two legs. So one's for up and one's for down. And then if we can get power up here, we'll come back here and I'll tape up or I'll hold up the switch somehow. We'll test at this point right here, at this plug, we'll test both of those leads. We're down at the fuse box, a little bit of light on it. Now we're looking for a number 10 fuse uh, slot and that's right there, the yellow one. So we need 20, we need power on this. So this will be powered when the ignition is in the run or accessories position. So I'll put it in the run position and see if we have power. And we do. Now let's try it in the accessories just to cover all our bases. Okay, so we have power to the fuse. Well, let's check to see if the fuse is any good. And it is, so the fuse is good. Good. So we know that we have power to the fuse. Well, there's the fuse checked out. Everything's working there. That's uh, number 10 slot, 20 amp. That's good. So now we have to go after the, uh, uh, the relay. Now, while I was doing this fuse thing, I was thinking to myself, I'm sure I I've seen a, a manual in my supply of manuals for a Bronco. And sure enough, I have a 73 to 79 a manual for Ford cars because they put this in the cars section for some reason. Anyway, I had the manual for the Ranchero. So I just printed off um, what this is here is the power tailgate right here, the power tailgate window control and related parts. So it's pretty cool. It tells you the location of the relay. Also the switch and where the switch goes and blah, blah, blah. And there's that the limit switch right there. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And also what else was in here? Oh yeah. So this is the Bronco tailgate parts right there. So it gives you a, a rundown of the hard parts as well, like the rods and all that stuff. So that's pretty cool. 
So anyway, we're going to deal with this part of it right now. So we need to find that uh, we need to find that relay, and that one is an, uh, it's on the instrument panel reinforcement. So I went ahead and I took the dash out because I needed to anyway, or the the odometer and speedometer uh, assembly. So let's go on and go up here. So I have it all out. It needed to be cleaned up. It's just disgustingly dirty and very brittle too. <laughs> anyway, so we're up in here and uh, I found the relay. Now I gotta get my light up here now too because it's dark in here. So the relay, so we're looking at the steering wheel right here, right? Like that, and we're going to where this, there's the speedometer cable. So if you're looking for this relay, it's right down here on the side of this uh, support. That's it, right, right there. That's the relay for the uh, rear window. Uh, and there's the cable for it and the plug. So we have to test this out. So I'm gonna unplug it and test it, uh, test the leads going into it. I, I might be able to get at it right there now. I can't really see very well with one hand. I'm gonna set up a, yeah, I can't get at it with my, uh, with one hand. I'm holding the camera at the same time. So let me uh, get positioned. I'll get a tripod and let me get positioned and we'll test this out. But that's where it's at. That's the location. You probably can get at the underneath because it's, it's right there, but there, there's wire harness. I can touch it from underneath. It's right at the bottom, like right there. You can feel, I can feel it with my finger, but you might not be able to test it from there, but you can reach under and see if it's, if it's clicking. So let me get a tripod set up and we'll test, uh, test this plug out. So, all right, I got the plug disconnected. I grabbed the plug and I'm going to test it. This is the black wire with the white line on it, black and white wire. Let's see if we get power and there should be power on that all the time. So that comes right from the battery through uh, splice. So that's good there. Now, um, there's a, a switch right here, the switch wire. So that switches the relay on. And I think that is a, I don't know what the chart says. I don't know, it doesn't matter. There's only one. So this should be off until I turn the ignition on. There it's on, on run, and on an accessories. So that's to run the actual relay, to activate the relay. So now the wire going out from the black is a blue, looks like a blue wire blue and black or something like that but I mean the colors are not really corresponding with the chart I have that well or at least it's not my eyesight anyway so we put this in here now this won't work like I can put it in there now but it's not going to work because the power will have to jump through the relay so I'm going to have to plug it back in and I don't know if I can get in there and test it without shorting something out or not but let me try but I know it's working because you can hear it clicking, but I'm not sure if it's put power through. Yeah, this is going to be tough. Now, maybe I can get this in here like this, like a. All right, I can get her. So when I turn this, uh, get on there. I don't want to puncture the wires. I think I'm on it there now. So I think. So when I turn the key on, that should activate. There it goes. So that now is sending on run and on accessories it's sending power over to the uh, switch on the dash so now let's move over to the switch on the dash and we'll test that plug and that switch so i've disconnected the plug from the switch i'm just going through what wires we have so on the plug we have the ground wire right here and then we have a should be a blue I'm just looking at the diagram, blue and black. So there's a blue and black one right there. So that's power coming over through the relay. So that would be the direct, when that relay is activated, it will send power over to here. So this should not have power until I turn the key in the run or accessories position. So then what's left is two more wires, one going back. And that's like a, I don't know, that's a purple and blue, something like that. Whatever we had going to the back. And then the colors are a little off. For Maybe it's just my eyesight too. And then we had the other one. So this one goes to the back. 
and this one goes to the back. So these should be up and down wires for the window. So we'll, re we'll just cover that again. So ground, power, up or down, up or down. We'll know in a second. So let's just probe these to make sure there's power at it before we go any further. So let's check it now with the ignition switch off and there's no power. So I'm going to turn the key on. There we have power in run and power in accessories. So that's good. And the ground is the ground. So let's just go put it back on and then we'll back probe it again. So now I'll turn the key on. And I'm going to back probe this switch to make sure we're getting power to the back. So there's one of them right there. If we don't short anything out. So that's the up. I don't know if you can see it, but the light. So the up is the pinkish. They say purple and blue, but I'm going to call it pinkish and blue. And so that works. And then the other one is down here. If I can get in there and do it right here. Let's see. And that's the down one. And oh, there, and it works. The little switch is... A little flaky on the down. Hopefully you guys can see that. So that tells me, unless there's a problem with one of the connectors between here and that connector that I was working on, we should have power on all those circuits in that uh, three-prong prong plug at the bumper. So let's go back, and I'll, I'm going to have to figure out a way to just, I'll either tape that up or something, and we'll test each one individually. All right, we're back at the uh, plug right at the bumper again. And we tested before that the power coming from the battery right there is the black and white wire. So now I have the uh, switch tied in the up position for the window to go up. So one of these other two should be live. And the ignition switch is turned on. If you don't turn the ignition switch on, you won't get power back here. So we have power. So this prong right here the one that's opposite, the, the male prong on that plug coming from the back is the up switch. So that's for the up. So let me go and uh, tie the switch down and we'll test the center plug, the t center part of the socket, and we'll see if we have power on that. So just give me a second. Well, I've tied the, uh, the window switch in the down position with the ignition on and the center one should have power now. And it does. So now we have power there. We have power for the down. And we just tested that we have power for the up, which won't be on right now because I have it from the down position. So now, if I put this plug back together, in theory, the window should go up and down. Well, I have plugged that back in at the bumper, that, that connector. So let's go up front and let's see if the uh, window will work now. So I'm up front here, I have the key off, I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to see if the window will go up. Nothing. And nothing for the down. So, there's, so we need to go into the tailgate and see what's going on in the tailgate. Okay, so nothing happened. But we know we have power right to this plug. So all that leaves now is to deal with is the harness going into the tailgate. Now these tailgate harnesses, they take a bit of a, bur a beating because there's this joint right here. So let's open this up and see what we can do with it. All right, so no power at the tailgate. So what I'm going to have to do is put the window up enough so I can get at this switch. And then we can get the switch out. And maybe we can test if there's power coming through the harness between the body and the tailgate. So I'm, I'm just jumpering this over so I can run the window up and down. All right. I need to get up enough so I can get at that switch. It'll catch on these things for sure. It always does. There we go. Come on. Do something, will you? There we go. We're getting up there. Now we should have access. We'll have access to the switch over here. So I can see it really well. So I'll bring you in and we'll have a look. So now that I have the switch exposed, I'm going to reach in and I'm going to try to jog the window because in theory, the power should be on to that switch for the key. 
because that's what that's for. It's all it's direct power to turn on and off with the key. So I'm going to reach in and do this, and you got to be careful. You got like guillotines flying back and forth here, so you got to be careful doing that stuff. So let's see if it has any motions at all. Nothing on that. Nothing there. Now I'm going to put this safety switch back in and see if that makes a difference. And if nothing changes there, we're going to pull this switch out and see nothing with the switch out. Now with the switch in, nothing. So that tells me we probably have a power issue between that plug and the switch. So I'm going to pull the switch out and have a look. So what there is on these switches, let me grab a, a pair of pliers here. To get at that, uh, to get that switch out, there's, uh, you can see it right there. There's a little metal bale, like a little metal clip, like a wire clip. So I'm going to pull it out with my needle nose and you're going to block your view for a second and I'll show you the clip after. So, All right, I have, all right, so I have the clip off, but it's stuck around there. So let's see if we can get the switch off. There it is. Switch just lifted right off. So this is the little bale. It's like a window winder bale, but it's a larger one. So, all right, well, I got the switch out, um, as you saw. And here's that little clip right there. I'll set that aside. So there's no power. And these switches, I didn't realize it until I got it out. But this switch is riveted together. So these are like micro switches that are all one piece. So there would have had to have been a harness connector somewhere. And I guess that would be back at, according to the schematic, the only connector is back there. So we'd have to pull the harness all out to check it. Since it seems to be all one piece, this harness, and I, I've taken the grommet out of the, of the side of the tailgate. I'm going to probe these uh, plugs to see if we have power here anywhere. I don't like it doing it this way. I don't like puncturing uh, wires. But sometimes that's what you have to do. All right, so I'm going to puncture into the black wires first to see if we have power up here. There's power to that switch. And there's power to that switch. So let's turn one of the switches on. And there's power going out. Yeah, the switch works. See? Well, we know that there's power going into this, these micro switches and there's power coming out. So let's test the yellow and red first over at the plug that goes directly to the motor. It's right there. And there's no other, there's nothing past this other than this side, this plug. This is the only connection there is between the motor and this switch. And we know the motor works. So let me just try this one. So that one works. Let me try this. It's a little bit hard to do with one hand sometimes. Probe them properly. Let me try the other one. Nope. Maybe I have to have that grounded. Or this is actually a problem in this one. Something going on here. All right, let's see if we can get power up in here. That's the red and yellow. I'll bet you I'll try it up in here and see if we get power on it. There's power coming out. Let me try that again. Yep, we have power coming out of it. And that goes to the tan wire right here. So let me probe this one. 
Probably need that short circuited. Let's see what happens here. Yep, there we go. So this needs to be jumpered. So we'll get this jumpered. Like I say, I'm gonna delete this anyway. So let's get this jumpered so it gives us power through that plug. So I can get it jumpered. Oi, oi, get on there. You, all right. Now, let's see if we have power on the red wire with the yellow stripe. Yet. What's going on there? Come on, you. Uh huh. So, something. So, we'll go back here. We're getting power to the other side of this plug. Right there. So, power is going through the plug. All right. So, I probed everything and I got power right up to here. So this would be the switch that doesn't allow power to go to the motor if the window is not, all, not halfway down. So let's try it again, make sure, because I'm gonna have to do some backtracking here, I think. So I have power on that. So that wire, before it gets to here, travels, <laughs> I don't know why they did it, but they must have had a reason. But that wire that goes from here, it goes all the way back. And I'll show you over here, all the way back to the harness that would be in by the switch. So I pulled it back through here a little bit. And what there is, there's a uh, splice right here. Now I can feel stuff in there. So I'm gonna see if maybe someone had done some work in there. So that's our next spot to look. So let me get the I'll bring you down a little bit closer. Well, let me get the uh, tape off and then I'll bring you in. So, okay, I've bared the wire that's there. There is a splice here, but it's only for the main power and that was not uh, worked over. That's factory uh, electrical tape. So someone wasn't monkeying with it. So I'm gonna continue to chase this wire. I'm gonna have to pull it back in through there first though. Okay, so I chased that wire back. There's nothing broken in that small set of wires. So I hooked up, even though I jumpered that, I hooked that switch back up again. And uh, I don't know why, maybe my, my jumpers might not be doing a good job, but when I hooked the switch back up, now I get power. I get power to that green plug. So I'll check the yellow side because I didn't have any power. Nope. Check it here. Power there. We get power there, but it's still not activating the motor because it should, it should activate the motor at this point. And that's the only two wires. Well, that, unless this one doesn't work because it has to use this as, a, as the opposite polarity. So this one here isn't working, this red one, sorry. If this red one isn't working, then this, this motor won't work because it needs to reverse those polarities through those wires. So I'm thinking that we have a red and yellow where the yellow stripe to the red in this plug has a problem. Well, let me pull the plug apart and have a look. Well, it's not pretty in there, that's for sure. She's so pretty corroded. Should be able to get those out. All right, let's have a look. Where's something small and pointy? Maybe this thing. I can't see. All right, let me get this plug apart. I'll get a small screwdriver. Get that plug apart. Well, I just went ahead and cut that plug right out. It's all corroded. I put some blade connectors in, so if I need to take it apart, they're heat shrink ones, but I notice it split there a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, I have this uh, Red Wolf tape, with cloth tape. So I'm gonna put some of that in there. This is actually for harnesses. 
It's pretty cool stuff. So I'm going to put that in there and cover this all up again. So I'll just give it an extra layer of protection. Get on there. This is the first time uh, I've owned this Red Wolf tape, but so far I'm pretty happy with it. It's supposed to be heat resistant as well. And it tears easy. And it tears square. So I'm just going to do both of these blade connectors up, even though they're heat shrunk. There's a lot of moving parts in here. I don't want it to catch and short something out. And I'll just put a little wrap around the pair of them just to hold them in one place together. All right, let's see how this works. Haha, -ha. whoops, shook you guys, ran into you. <laughs> so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna put this harness back over where it belongs, this is, which is over here. I'll get this all done. I'm going to get this all done up, <clears throat> put the deck up, or the tailgate up, lower the window and put the tailgate up because I don't want to be the stupid guy. And then uh, I have to put this, I have to put this all back together. I have to put this switch back in. So just give me a few minutes and we'll get that done and we'll give her a test in the uh, upright position. Well, we uh, never really talked much about this limit switch and what it does. Uh, before I call it end here, I'd like to go over that. So the limit sw switch sits right in here. And there's one in there now, but I think it's faulty because that's why they had this other one on here. This is very much like a brake switch. And dummy me was there pushing it, thinking it was, uh, yeah, to activate it that way. But it's not. They're closed circuit when it's out all the way, like a brake light switch. Took me a minute to figure that one out. But anyway, <laughs> rectified it. Hey, you know, you're thinking. So... What does it do? Well, it, obviously we saw that it controls the power to the motor. So it's sitting in here and there's a rod that goes underneath and there's a mechanism underneath. And when the window's all the way up, as if it's, you know, up inside the cap, weather stripping, this rod will be in the up position because it's pulled down by the window itself. It's hooks on the bottom of the window. When the window goes down, it pulls it down and when it goes up, it allows it to go back up. So with it in the, uh, the window's down right now, but I can, I can reach in here and, and deal with it. So it's right now, the window in theory would be in the up position. So what happens is you can't open the latch because it, it, the switches act, uh, the limit switch is depressed by this rod, this, this uh, mechanism right here, which is hooked to these uh, side rods that go out to the uh, strikers. So when it's up in the up position, now assuming the window is up and in place, you can't open the, you can't, it won't let you open the hatch. You can't open the tailgate. And the reason for that is so you don't break the window. <laughs> and uh, the only way you can get this to release is to lower the window. So the window, you lower the window down and then it'll, uh, with the window, when the window goes down, I'll, I'll do it. This rod will get pulled down when it gets almost to the bottom, like so. Where is it? Like that. And then you can release the, the latches to open the, open the, uh, the gate up. And by then your window will be down out of the way. It'll be clear. So that's what the, the purpose of that is. So if you are operating this with that limit switch hooked up and you need to run the window up and down, you can close these uh, strikers right here and it'll work. So that's kind of how it works. I'm not going to bother testing it out because I'm getting rid of that. I think I'm smart enough to not to try to open the tailgate with the window up. But hey, you never know. I may have a brain fart. But that's what it does. It won't let you open the tailgate with the window in the up position. But it'll allow you, the system, to roll the window down. And that's it. All right, so let's put it up and test her out here and see, make sure this is working. I think there's something catching. So I did run it up and down, but I think there's something catching in here. Probably this harness, which is sad. I'm going to have to pull that out and 
do something with it. So we covered the limit switch. I think there's going to be something catching here, but I'm going to try it and I'll just go jog it up. I'll use the keys in the, in the gate first, but this feels like that wire harness is too close to the mechanism. But anyway, let's give it a whirl. We want to test it. The limit switch thing is down. Yep. Oh, I didn't open the, there we go. Now I can close the gate because I had this, there we go. All right, so let's try the key in her and see how it goes. I hope the, uh, I got to check that harness. I think it's going to click. Oh, wrong way, sorry. Yeah, she's catching on that harness, so I'll have to fix that up. If you can't be having that rubbing, you'll have more problems. Battery's getting low in the truck. So that's that. Let's, let's try it off the, off the ignition going down. Very good. And that's where that window uh, lever, that lever, or that rod rather, would pull that mechanism down. So you, then you could allow you to reach in and you could open up the tailgate just like so. And that's it. Well, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's chasing down electrical problems is never fun. There are a couple of uh, connectors between the tailgate and the dash, or one anyway for sure, that if you're still chasing down electrical problems, you may have to search in there. But we covered pretty much every uh, electrical connection in this uh, tailgate setup for the window. And uh, hopefully uh, someone finds it helpful. I know it was a good learning for me. I would never done one of these before, so it's good to learn your vehicle, especially these old uh, vintage rigs. They're <laughs> They always need work. So learning more, the more you learn about them, the better it is. Anyway, everyone, uh, really appreciate you being here and thanks for subscribing. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, there's going to be more on this one, the Bronco. There's going to be more on the 65 Thunderbird convertible. There'll be more on the hardtop convertible. Also, we have the Cabriolet and maybe, maybe someday I'll get that Ranchero back in here and put the quarter panels on it. No one really wants to watch Ranchero videos. I found that out in the early part of my channel. I mean, I have Ranchero repair videos that have been up for three, three or more than three years, and there's like 40 views. Tells you, no one wants a Ranchero, apparently. And I happen to okay like them. I don't love them, but I okay like them. Uh, if you don't know uh, much about my Ranchero, it's a GT, 1973 GT. Uh, with a uh, 351 Cleveland Cobra jet. It's the four bolt main engine with a factory installed uh, four speed standard with the Hurst shifter. So it's a bit of an oddball. I think there's only 1960 made or something like that or 1890. I just forget what the numbers are. Um, so it's, it's, not a, it's not a high numbers vehicle, the build number. But anyway, rambling on about the Ranchero that no one cares about. <laughs> anyway, everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this was good for you, and we'll catch you in the next one.